Hey everybody, it's Denny. This is James from TDB.org, and today we are reviewing um, another Korean green tea. On episode 28 of TDB. That's Check correct. us out, TDB.org. Yep. That sounds for T database. <laughs> Get that question a lot, actually. Yep. There are some inappropriate answers to that question. Uh, I'm not going to say this on the show. Never have, except on episode something else. Yep. Um, but today we are reviewing a Sejok. And so if you remember back to one of those episodes in the early 20s, um, we reviewed a Jungjok and a, De- uh, and a uh, Donchon from Dongchon Teas. Um, and so these teas were kindly provided to me by Arthur from Morning Crane Teas. Um, and so he's the wholesaler for North American teas for, uh, for Dongchon Teas. And I've actually been to the Dongchon store in Seoul, um, in the neighborhood of Insadong, visited their store, and his rates are actually very, very close to the actual rates. So his markup is very, very small. So if you are interested in this tea, definitely go check him out. He was nice enough also to just give these to us, so that's great. Really appreciate it. This is a little bit of a higher quality tea because the leaves have been picked the second yep. flush. So this is a Sejok, so second. Fantastic. So we'll hopefully taste that. How much leaf do we have here? We got this is a green tea. Yep. So we have about four and a half grams, and so this is the spring twenty thirteen harvest um, from uh, Dongchon. So cool. very very high, uh, high quality tea. And so this this actually these are actually the same leaves that were used for the black tea. You'd use sejok leaves to make its black tea. Okay. Cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to preheat our stuff. And this is a nice little Korean teapot I got during my little expedition out there. Very cool. So do you think we'll use for four grams of leaf? Yeah, it's four and a half four grams, and a half of, grams leaf. of leaf. Um, Water-wise, I think we'll use. Um, yeah, so we're probably going to get, I don't know, a good cup's worth, each of us. Yeah. And so now that we've kind of preheated this shake it up a little bit and then give it a smell. Ooh, sweet and um, yeah. kind of grainy, like barley. And, yeah. Yeah. And so Korea, interestingly, also drinks a lot of um, barley and corn tea. So <laughs> an interesting, some interesting food for thought there. Cool. All right. And so we'll Beautiful. steep this for the first time at about 40 seconds. 30 to 40, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are going to be even younger leaves than our Jung Jack. And right. if you remember, those were really small right. um, and quite delicious. Yeah. And thinking back, I think we the most notable flavor we kind of got out of that that uh, episode was kind of like this corn, like a nice complex corn mm-hmm. um, sweetness to it. Yeah, wonderful. And similar sort of style of steeping any sort of green tea you're going to do, um, definitely off of the boil water, um, for a little bit of longer time, we'll go ahead and actually drink the first steeping. You know, normally we rinse tea, but uh, unless the quality is kind of so-so, in which case you don't want to be drinking that tea anyway. But um, for green specifically, uh, it really does. Uh, it's more than appropriate to go ahead and just drink that first steeping. So, cool. yeah, definitely, especially for some of these high-quality greens, mm-hmm. um, like we're talking about, like Japanese greens, Korean greens in general are pretty safe to drink. Um, just off the cuff like this. Beautiful. So, can I have a quick smell? Mmm. It smells very similar, actually, to yep. the uh, Jung Jock. Yeah, very sweet. And nice, beautiful, clear liquid, um, kind of a, uh, a light yellow. Body is amazing. Yeah, yeah, really nice. Really texture. I'd say that's probably the biggest mm-hmm. difference between this and the uh, Jung Jok. Nice and thick. Similar corn flavor, mm-hmm. um, corn sweetness. Mm-hmm. Really nice. Wonderfully brewed. A little bit more complexity, um, just in terms of I don't know, the flavor complexion. When I actually drank tea at the Dong Chan shop, and I've been told the guy there is a brewmaster, so he's very good. And I had this 
very mm-hmm. flavorful no flavor coming out of it which I is very interesting I totally can totally can, can uh, appreciate that and that's actually yeah, yeah. almost like a, that salty minerally mm-hmm. um, but definitely so I think, I think the first thing that struck me about this was the body and viscosity of the actual liquid itself and then sweet corn flavors corn barley um, roasted grain flavors uh, and then yeah the nori I think is a really smart very much so yeah and that's a flavor I've actually gotten out of a few Japanese green teas mm. so it's definitely a flavor I do occasionally associate with um, green tea when would you drink this this is wonderful um I would probably drink this um definitely not immediately when I wake up mm-hmm. and definitely not on an empty stomach per mm-hmm. se just cause it is a green tea mm-hmm. um but I don't know it's quite nice so I mean maybe in the afternoon at some time uh, I don't know. For me, I tend to drink more roasty teas, especially now with Seattle getting a little bit darker. Yeah. It tends to be, my evening teas tend to be like ripe pullers mm-hmm. and like roasted wooey oolongs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So maybe sometime in the afternoon. I can imagine this being a wonderful way of completing a, a really good breakfast. I mean, it's kind of like a light breakfast. I don't think this would be well, this would pair well with food per se, but I think after eating something um, filling for breakfast specifically, I can see this providing just a wonderful energy for the day. And it really, in terms of flavor um, and taste, stands on its own. It really does. Yeah. It's, it's very nice. And looking at the leaves, they look very similar to our Jung Jack leaves. Just like nice and small leaves. Yeah, um, beautiful. Yeah. And so I noticed that also, so it's wonderful, and um, I'd say just a bolder, richer, fuller taste. Um, the viscosity actually is, I think, kind of similar, though, interestingly enough. <laughs> um, and then it's lasting a little longer. Um, uh, really nice, yeah. I was going to say that um, I noticed that, James, you brewed this one for a much shorter amount of time, actually. I don't know yeah. if you noticed that or not, but... That's kind of the school I've been doing. It's, it's yeah. I mainly... My green tea drinking is mainly Japanese greens, right. and so kind of the school of thought there is you start at a lowish temperature... Um, and you brew for maybe 30 to 45 seconds, Mm -hmm. and then you go slightly higher. Um, So you'll notice the first time I went here to here and back to there. So each time you go from a device, you lower the temperature a little bit by 10 or 15 degrees. And so we started at lowest temperature, and then we increased temperature, and then if we were to continue brewing this, which we probably will off camera, uh, what you do is you increase the temperature a little bit more. So I would reheat this water um, and add time. And so you could probably brew this pretty successfully for four or five steepings, which is good for a green tea. Very good. Absolutely. Yeah, wonderful, beautiful leaves. Um, Brew perfectly. I would totally recommend these brewing parameters. Um, Just like a really nice, high-quality green tea. Yeah, really, and and very, very clean, considering we didn't rinse and definitely no regrets in that regard. Absolutely. Similar I would say more to in taste profile, similar more similar to Japanese green that I would that I've had before than something like a Dragon Well or yeah, something. Yeah. Something from mainland China. Um so this is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you again uh Arthur. Yeah, Arthur, yes. Yeah, from so, Morning Crane tea. Yeah. Super super delicious. Um and uh yeah, should we wrap yeah. it there? Yeah. Let's thanks for watching guys and And this tea is very, very good. Um, And so they're probably doing their autumn harvest right now. So I totally recommend um, picking it up. Uh, These Korean green teas, it's a very rare um, experience in the sense that you traditionally get your Chinese or your Japanese greens, which are much more commonly consumed Mm -hmm. um, just as a beverage. So drinking these teas, it's definitely like a nice change of pace and something really, really quite nice. Yeah, absolutely. High quality, delicious. So um, people want to learn more about tea, James, what should they do? Yeah, so you should visit um, our site, Tea Database, um, so tdv.org. Um, please check us out. We've also been releasing a lot of different articles on Taiwanese oolongs and that sort of thing. So if you are interested in uh, learning a bit more about uh, those types of teas, definitely check that out. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get uh, yeah. consistent updates. Yeah, we are almost at 100 subscribers. We will hopefully hit it by the time this comes out. But cool. we are at like 96 right now, so. Going strong. Not yeah. bad. Not bad. Cool. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Um, we totally appreciate it. See ya.